Welcome to Ponage Pro, show number 47. This is the show where we take you from being the home PC tech and fixing viruses to expanding your knowledge into servers and routers and firewalls and all the fun stuff that the big boys play with. So here's the, the co-host and star of the show. I would say he's the LeBron James of the show, Matt Rainey. Well, good evening. <laughs> Welcome all. Yes. Uh, we're just getting over a Mardi Gras holiday over here, so we're getting uh, back into work. Had uh, yesterday off, which means I didn't go to the office. Doesn't mean I didn't do any work, unfortunately, as is the case. Because uh, we do have clients that are around the country, and they don't realize that it's Mardi Gras. Hmm. Of course, I don't, go to, I don't go to any parades on actual Mardi Gras day. Um, I go... Parades prior to that, so I stay away from Mardi Gras Day, so I was home anyway. Okay. Anyway, how you doing? It's good, man. It's Wednesday. The week is halfway over. Two more days of Friday, so can't complain, right? You can always complain. Come on. Hey, this is true. <laughs> this is true, especially when you have to work with Mary. We got a bunch <laughs> of emails that you guys submitted, so thank you very much. So let's pop off the first one. This is from Tom. Says, what's up, guys? Love what you're doing. At least one or two things you bring up every show really hit home for me, and I love your client stories. Matt, you're a great storyteller. Just thought I would put this out there in case it can help someone. I was listening to a show the other day about remote administration, remote administration, and you were talking about how to reboot a machine via remote desktop, which I think we had, we had discussed using the shutdown command via the command prompt. He says, you explain how to do it through a command prompt. Well, here's one more way to do it. Go to start menu, click Windows security, then you can click shut down. Then it will ask you if you, if you want to shut down or restart. Just click restart. And you, you should be good to go. Keep up the good work. Now, I was unaware that you could do it this way. Yeah, so was I. So was I. So naturally, when I got this message, first thing I did was try it out. Mm hmm. So I connected to my computer at my office from my house. And sure enough, there, when you click on the start, there's, when you're connecting rem remotely, you're not going to see this when you're at the computer physically. But when you're connecting remotely, you'll see an option that says Windows Security. And sure enough, you click on that button, you can then have access to the shutdown, restart commands, that kind of thing. Um, now on XP, and here's one reason I may not have ever seen it, at least on XP. In XP, I always put the start menu to classic. So I don't have that dual column or two rows when you click on start. But if you have it on the single column, the classic task menu view, you can go to start settings window security it's still there it's just hidden unless you go to settings okay. so i have never noticed it but that is a great a great little tip there and thank you for that email tom and again it's a perfect example on how we've been doing i've been doing this for about 15 years matt has been doing it probably for just as much or even longer and it's funny how there's different ways to accomplish the same task and so we welcome those emails, you know, just let us know how, if you have a better, quicker, faster way of doing something. So definitely I have a different way of doing it now. Now, one thing that this does, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, if you connect to a computer, of course, control alt end is the same thing as doing control alt delete, Yes, but it pushes it to the remote. Now that does not work if like if I'm connected to a server, and then from the server, I already put to a workstation. If I do control alt end, it pushes a control lead to the server. It, it won't go to the, to the uh, next RDP session. So just something with that Windows. Yeah, Windows security. I've, I've never seen it. It makes me wonder how much else if I'm not seeing. I need to pay more attention, I guess. I agree. There, There's a guy at home or a girl that watches the show and says, bunch of idiots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a bunch of what a bunch of idiot users. They're not even users. God. Yeah, I know. Windows security. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. That was good. Good tip. Yes, sir. Next email from Dante. Good morning, Matt. I need your advice. On one of your earlier shows, you mentioned specifications of a good server. 
things like RAID 1 arrays, RAID 5s, data change, hard drive, hot swappable, 15K SAS drives, redundant power supplies, etc. etc. My question to you is would you go with the same specs or setup for a starter server with Microsoft Server Essentials 2011? I have an accounting client with 10 users slash workstations and setting up the first server. Would you build it the same way? Of course, with a change removed, he puts in parentheses. I thought about RAID 1 for the system, RAID 5 for the data, and then when he says system is the operating system. What are your thoughts? Are SATA drives sufficient for essentials? How about processes? Do you need one, two? So any suggestions are welcome. All right, so Dante here is has a, a client so with 10 users and workstations. So you, you responded to the email, but I'll let you go ahead and... Uh... Yeah, now there's, of course, every client's going to be different. If I have a client, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a budget. What kind of budget are you looking at? If they're complete rock bottom budget, there's a few things that I would I could I would probably do. First, with 10 users, okay, well, first I would ask them if they want to use the client backup feature, which is included in Small Business Server 2011 Essentials. Uh, now, what that does is it can back up your client workstations. Pretty, pretty nice little feature that, that's included with this version of Small Business Server. Uh, of course, if you want this feature not in Small Business Server 2011, you have to use what's called Storage Server. But anyway, it's a nice little feature. Client, it's a quick way to back up client workstations if they want to get back up quickly. Let's say a hard drive goes out, you put a, fix a hard drive, of course, or replace a hard drive. You boot up to a certain uh, disk, and it says, and you say, hey, restore for my backup. Looks at the server, restores the backup, you're back up, you're ready to go. So if the clients do want to take advantage of this feature, you don't need disk space for the Exchange server because Essentials does not include Exchange server, but you will need disk space to house these client backup images or client backup files, not images, client backup files. Now, depending on how much space you need, this is a backup, remember. It's a backup of the client workstations. So you don't even need RAID 5 for this. You can do a RAID 0, which is a stripe, just to get a large set to be able to house the backups. And this does not need to be backed up either. But back to the specs of the server. If they don't want to, they want rock bottom price. Some things you can eliminate is hot swappable drives to where if you need to change a drive, you can shut it down, replace the drive. That's, of course, cheaper. You don't need redundant power supplies. You can save money there. Not much, but different chat. You might buy different chassis now. So the chassis that's going to have a single power supply and non-hot swappable drives is going to be much less than the drive that does support these features. Um, a small business backup. He mentions LTO or RDX drives and semantic exec, backup exec. Uh, on this server, for SPS 2011, the backup, the built-in backup is much better than in past versions of SPS or past versions of Windows. And if you're not backing up Exchange, the built-in backup is fine. It works pretty good. Okay. I don't like it for backing up Exchange. But I have used it before with somebody who has Exchange. I don't like the way you have to go through the restore for Exchange with this backup. It does get you a full backup, but I don't like the restore. But the, the alternate of that is you may not have to go back to your backups if you want to restore a single message because we talked about before the Exchange retention policy. So if they delete an email message, you can go to the exchange retention policy and restore messages up to 30 days back. So that may not be an issue. Uh, so you can use the built-in backup. Now, the built-in backup can only back up to external hard drives. So you don't need the LTO or RDX drives. Uh, and we've mentioned before, RDX does show up as a hard drive, a drive letter, but 
small business server does not support RDX drives, which is fine because I've really grown to not like RDX drives. So they really have their issues. Okay, so you've uh, described several different methods to cut back the cost. And I guess like the question here, you know, if they ever expand past 10. Um... Yeah, well, SB, and that's what we need to plan for. Another discussion with them is, is growth. So right now they have 10 users, let's say. So the, the two discussions are budget and growth. If they say, well, we do plan on growing, then they need to accommodate that into what we quote them. Either that meaning... I would make them aware that this version of the server operating system can handle 25 users at most. That's the limit. So if they plan on growing more than 25 users in the next, let's say, two or three years, I, w I wouldn't recommend this. If they say, yeah, we plan to grow that much, but we, that's five years down the road, that's fine. Because by five years, they'll need a new server anyway. Sure. Um, so I'd make them aware of that. I'd also make them aware of with a budget server comes limitations. So there may not be enough. You may only have room for five hard drives total in the in the server. So to where later on they've either got, either got to go to ex external storage, Drobo, or get a new a new server. Right now, where they've grown over the years and the server is five or six years old, they run out of space constantly and they've asked why we why why are they in this position? I say, well, one, you've outgrown your server. You've merged with another company, so you've grown right there. Two, I didn't sell you the server. <laughs> so right. This server was I, I took over your support after the server was in place. The server is not upgradable. There's no more drive base. There's there's too many issues. So if we go with a less expensive server, you sacrifice maybe expandability, upgradability, but it's cheaper. So it's really finding a balance with the customer between budget, expandability, all those things. Sure. But definitely the places you can cut back are not having hot swappable drives. Just let them know if you ever need to do drive maintenance, we've got to shut it down, mm -hmm. which is going to be some downtime. Replace the drives. Sometimes the rebuild is much slower. It just depends on a lot of issues. Right. And this and it, this is a client with 10 workstations and he doesn't expect any growth. I mean, you know, downtime for an hour or two is, it's, you know, no no big deal to them, possibly. Uh, possibly. Um, now, he did mention this is a, an accounting firm. So during tax season, all the accounting clients I have don't even want one minute of downtime. Mm -hmm. So being that, they may likely want to take on the client backup features. They may decide, well, we might need the feature to be able to have some maybe if a rate, if a drive goes out to not shut it down to swap it out. Because if it's hot swappable and one drive fails, you're fine. Right. You just yank it out, put another one in, you're on your way. If it's not hot swappable, you got to explain to them, I've got to take this, shut it down, and do it some drive maintenance. So uh, you can go redundant power supplies. I mean, definitely have a battery backup. That's I don't consider that optional. Every server has a battery backup. So you may not need redundant power supplies. Although the power supply dies, you have to order a new one, and that can be significant downtime. Um, and the, back to the backup. The backup's pretty nice. Uh, what it, you can use multiple external hard drives. Now, again, that's not off-site storage, and I would let them know that, that they need to be responsible for swapping these hard drives out, say, once a week and bringing one off-site. Um, the advantage of tapes, like an LTO, if you're talking about an on-site backup solution, is that a tape is easy to, to take with you when you leave. You don't have to make sure, you know, it's less work for a receptionist or somebody who's there every day to just grab it, put it in their purse, put it in their bag and go. Anyway, but it, they are expensive. So a, a, an LTO backup solution, along with semantic backup a backup exec, could be the same price as the server if it's a low end server. So it's a good way to cut some money. Yeah, and you'll and you'll see the clients that have been through a disaster or some type of failure. They'll say, you know, whatever we need to do for backups and or um you know like there's no dollar amount when it 
when they want to be up at all times. But those people that never experienced a failure, they go, ah, I don't need that. 